welcome back everyone. Uh, I am excited to tell you guys that I have successfully made the Copper 1 Nitro Tetrazole, otherwise known as DBX1, the namesake of this channel. So, uh, today we're going to be testing out some of its properties and uh, seeing what we can get it to do and how similar it is to the Silver Salt. So I didn't actually plan on making this video today. I was actually uh, preparing to make a video on um, my Marx generator, which runs off of two microwave oven transformers um, uh, put through a half-wave voltage doubler circuit. Um, but I decided that I would try to do a small-scale synthesis of DBX1 uh, through the reaction of... Um, copper 1 chloride and sodium uh, nitrotetrazole. Uh, but I, I eventually decided against that because it, I wasn't getting tremendous yields of copper 1 chloride in my synthesis of it, and they were uh, slowly oxidizing into copper 2 chloride. So I just figured I'd try throwing a, um, a vitamin C tablet, which is ascorbic acid, um, that's what vitamin C is, in case you didn't know that. Um, and uh, ascorbic acid uh, reduces copper 2 chloride to copper 1 chloride. And at this point, I had already mixed the solutions of sodium nitrotetrazole with copper 2 chloride. And uh, when I added the ascorbic acid, the vitamin C tablet in, instantly I saw a change in color. And uh, it, was, it was on heat at this time. Um, because, uh, that, that's just how the reaction goes to make the, the DBX1. And, um, on mild heating, uh, it changed color, uh, from a dark green color to a light red, um, to a brown. And, uh, this is the, the end result. It's a brownish black, uh, color. And it performs just like I would like it to. It uh, it acts very similarly to a silver salt of nitrotetrazole, but it um, it is not nearly as sensitive, and um, it does not melt before detonating. So I put a little bit of the copper one nitrotetrazole right here um, on the on the aluminum foil, and we'll just put a flame directly underneath the foil. And see how it goes off. So as you can see, that little bit of the nitrotetrazole, the copper one nitrotetrazole, it rips a hole right through the foil as you would as you would expect with such a uh, nitrotetrazole salt with a heavy uh well with a heavier metal. It acts very similar to the silver salt. Uh, but it doesn't face the sensitivity problems that you'll find with the silver salt. And that's why this, uh, this copper salt is expected for use in uh, the explosives industry because it, it doesn't face the same sensitive, uh, sensitivity issues and um, it really has the same sort of um, explosive capabilities, the brilliance, the... Um, uh, the temperature at which it detonates, um, and other characteristics that you would find with the silver salt. Now we'll try it again with a direct flame. Well, actually, in this case, I'll use a direct ember. So, uh, there's the match. It, it didn't punch a hole through the foil. That's actually because, uh, when it made contact with the salt... It um it stuck to the fl uh, to the match and uh it once I pulled the match off the foil, it detonated on the match, ripping the the head of the match off. Well, that wasn't as uh nice looking as if it were to detonate on the foil. It certainly doesn't have the satisfaction uh, to it. Satisfaction. But it does tell you that this does detonate um with extreme brilliance. Uh, regardless if you're uh, heating from underneath or heating directly to it. And uh, that that's very useful for a primary. Now for the can test, I'm just going to be using 50 milligrams of the copper salt. Uh, I don't have much more than that 
uh, on my hands right now because, like I said, I uh, th this video wasn't really planned to be on copper one nitrotetrazole. It was more going to be on the high voltage electronics. So in the future, I might be able to put out a video on working with maybe like 250 milligrams. Uh, I I do have a good picture of um, the results of using 250 milligrams of the silver salt of nitrotetrazole and um, putting it on a can. Uh, I'll show that now. Uh, but the, the copper salt, I expect it to perform similarly, but we'll test that out right now. Well, that obviously didn't work too well, so we'll try it again with the same amount. Well, we clearly got it to go off that time. You can see the, the present uh, exit holes from the little bits of metal that were ripped through the back side of the can. It performs very similarly to the silver salt as I expected. Well guys, it looks like I've completed the synthesis of each and every one of the, the tetrazole derivatives that I originally planned to make on this uh, on this sheet right here. So if any of you guys have any suggestions for future videos or future tetrazole derivatives that I should look into, uh, feel free to write them in the comments and I'll look into them for the future. Uh, see you guys next time.